Welcome back to part two of this Fusion Motion Graphics project. Let's start by adding the text to our existing comp. I'll select the last node in my graph, which is a glow, and add a text node. That made a bit of a mess in my graph, so I'll just tidy that up a bit. I'll turn on Snap to Grid. Um, I like to work from left to right in the flow editor. Now I'll add some text in the text node, and by default that's bold, so I'll change it to regular. I need to load the last merge node in the viewer, and now I can position it inside the yellow guidelines. If you want to make fine adjustments to a parameter, in this case the font size, you can hold down control while dragging the slider. Now I'll pop over to the shading tab and drag the color picker onto the light yellow color swatch, which I put on the guide layer. The text doesn't show up very well against that damn background, so I'm going to darken the background a bit by selecting the Loader node and adding a Color Corrector node. I'll drop the gain down to 0.7, which is 70%, and I'll do the same for the saturation. But rather than color correcting the entire background, I'll create an elliptical mask to give it some variation. I'll move that to the right, tick the Invert checkbox, and soften the edge so that we have a bit of a highlight where the diamond is going to be. Now I can go back to working on the text. I'd like to emphasize a couple of words with bold typeface, which sounds easy enough, but there's a bit of a trick to it. I'll need to right click where I enter the text and choose character level styling. The text field turns blue to indicate that it's connected to a modifier. I'll switch to the modifier tab, and there's the modifier that I just created. Many of the controls here are similar to the ones on the text node, but they operate on individual letters. Before I tweak the modifier, I'll need to select the words or letters I want to change by dragging a box around them in the viewer. I can see some green brackets above and below the selected letters, so now I can return to the modifier and select bold. And hey presto, a mere 200 mouse clicks later, I'm done. Just be thankful your word processor doesn't work this way. We'll animate the text a bit later once we've got some more elements in place. But for now, don't forget to save your work. We'll build the diamond shape next by layering together four elements. First a vertical gradient with a mask, then the same again but slightly smaller so that we get a beveled look, then a soft white circle as a highlight, and finally the text on top. I'll start building this in a new comp for no good reason other than showing off how easy it is to move elements between comps using copy and paste. I'll start with a background node set to a vertical gradient with white at the top and black at the bottom. This isn't going to fill the entire frame so I'll switch to the image tab and set the dimensions to 500 pixels for both width and height. That's a little bigger than we need but I'll scale it down later. Now I'll add a rectangular mask and set the angle to 45 degrees for a diamond shape. It's a little small so I'll drag on one side. Oops, I want to scale it proportionally so I'll undo that. Let me try dragging the corner instead. Nope, still not right. It's quite common for Fusion tools to have independent height and width like this, and my preferred solution is to right click on the height property and choose expression, then drag the pick whip, that's the plus sign, onto the width parameter. Now I can adjust the width and the height will always match. I'll go for about 0.7 to fill the frame. That's going to be the bevel around the outside edge. So to fill in the center, I'm going to duplicate both those nodes using copy and paste and make a couple of changes. On the mask node, I'll drag the width down so it's a bit smaller. Don't worry about precision, we'll sort that out later. I'll also select the background node and change it from a vertical gradient to a horizontal gradient. Now I'm ready to layer the small diamond on top of the large one. My favorite approach is to drag the little red square, that's the output knot, from one node onto another. Fusion will automatically create a merge node. I'll check that, and it's almost right, but the gradient in the small diamond is a bit extreme, so instead of white to black, I'll change that from light grey to dark grey. The next layer is the white spot in the center, so I'll duplicate one of my existing background nodes, since it's already the right size, and change it to solid white. I'll slap on an elliptical mask and drag the soft edge slider all the way to the right. Now I'll check the result, and it looks good. The final element is a text node, so I'll make that a large number 2. The default color is white, so I'll switch to the shading tab and change that to black. When I layer that over my diamond, I can see that it's comically large, and it's bold by default, so I'll change that to regular, which is a bit skinny looking, so I'll go for semi-bold, which is halfway between. And we're basically done! 
Before we add this to the other comp and start drowning in a big spaghetti mess of nodes, this would be a great time to look at groups, which can help with staying organized. I'll go full screen, select all my nodes, and group them by pressing Ctrl G or using the context menu. Now I have one convenient node which I'll name Diamond2 since it contains the number 2. You might want to save at this point. To ungroup, there's no keyboard shortcut, so I'll use the right click menu again. To expand and collapse, you simply press Ctrl E or use the menu. There are two other techniques I find useful. I'll just create another node outside the group for comparison. When I pan or zoom in the flow editor, the entire graph moves even if the pointer is inside the group. But if I hold down Ctrl, I can pan and zoom within the group, which can be handy. It's also worth knowing that groups can have multiple inputs and outputs. For example, I'll ungroup everything and then create a group out of just the merge nodes. Don't ask me why. As you can see, the new group has multiple input and output connections around the border of the group. The catch is that these can't be edited, at least not in the usual way. I can't add or remove them, or even change what they're connected to inside the group. If I'm not happy with the group's inputs and outputs, I'll need to ungroup, make some changes, such as selecting different nodes, and then regroup. And that's it. You are now officially a group ninja. The next step is to duplicate our existing diamond a couple of times and create the variations we need. But before I make duplicates, I want to copy and paste the diamond into my main comp, merge it over the top, and line it up with my guidelines. I'll temporarily reduce the merge opacity so I can see what I'm doing. As well as setting the position and scale on the merge node, this is a good time to set the thickness of the diamond's border, so I'll need to expand the group to do that. There are two diamond shaped masks in there, which I'll name outer diamond and inner diamond. I'll adjust the width parameter on the inner diamond so that it's a better match for my guidelines. With that done, I'll make it opaque again and disconnect it to work on the duplicates. I'll duplicate using copy and paste and call this one diamond3. Of course the text changes from 2 to 3, but the colour also needs to change from black to white. There's no white highlight in the centre, so I'll just delete those nodes. The fill gradient also needs to change colour, from greys to yellows. I've provided a couple of colour swatches on the guide layer, if you want to match. And finally, the border changes from a gradient to solid white. As a finishing touch, I'll throw on a glow of 0.4 to give it a lift. For the hollow diamond, I'll copy and paste only the nodes I need, rather than the entire group. From inside the Diamond 3 group, I'll select both masks and the solid white colour. By the way, you can select multiple nodes with the control key, not the shift key, which is likely to start breaking connections. Now I'll collapse that group, paste those three nodes, and take a look. I just want a white border with no fill at all, so I'm going to shift drag the inner diamond onto the connection between the other two nodes to insert it into the flow. Now if I set the paint mode to subtract, I get the result I'm after. I'll group that and call it diamond hollow. Now we're ready to animate the wipes between the different diamonds. I'll just rearrange my flow so that the hollow diamond is on the bottom because we want to see the background image through the hole in the middle. On top of that, I'll merge the diamond 2 group. I'll add a rectangular mask to the merge node, resize it to fit the frame, and when I drag it down, you can see the wipe effect which I'll be animating. I'll just soften the edge a little, move the mask into its starting position, and rename it Wipe Off 2 so that I can find it later. Now I'll do the same thing with Diamond 3, except that we want it to wipe on, not off. I'll merge it on top of the other two, and create a soft mask which will perform the wipe. The starting position for this mask is above the frame, and I'll name it Wipe On 3. To keep these together, I'll create an underlay node and call that All Diamonds.
Now I'll connect the merge diamonds to my main comp using the merge node which I've already set up with the correct position and scale. To do that, I'll drag a connection onto the green foreground knot. None of the diamonds are visible at all until frame 10, so I'll create one more soft rectangular mask where they merge with the rest of the image. I'll drag that above all the diamonds and keyframe it that way on frame 10. Then I'll jump to frame 30 and slide it down into place so that we get a wipe on effect. Now I can animate the transitions between the diamonds. I'll find the wipe off 2 node I created earlier and keyframe its start position on frame 50. On frame 70 I'll wipe it down. Now I'll select the wipe on 3 node. On frame 70 I'll keyframe the start position and on frame 90 I'll drag it to the finish position where the diamond 3 is completely visible. Before I play that back there's one last piece of animation which you might not even have noticed which is that the diamonds slide gently into place from near the right side of the screen. They're currently positioned at their destination so I'll go to frame 50 and keyframe the centre parameter of the merge node which I'm using to position them. On frame 10 I'll nudge them a bit closer to the right side of the frame and in the spline editor I'll make sure that they ease into their target position. And that's it! We're done with the diamonds and the comp should now look something like this. Coming up next is the third and final video for this project where things really come to life thanks to some optical effects such as light flares and glass like effects.